What's up YouTube? Chris here with an exciting video. Today we are checking out the Trek Supercaliber. This is Trek's latest and greatest race cross country bike with some fancy technology they invented. Now this one here especially is cool because it has a custom Project One build to it and custom parts on top of it. It has the gold speckle paint job so it looks like it's filled with real gold. I don't know if it is, either way it looks superb. So this one here is the Trek Supercaliber 9.8. It came with the Shimano XT 1x12 drivetrain. So a fast shifting, respectable drivetrain. It's gonna be really responsive in the trails. It's actually gonna be super fast and nimble. We tweaked it though and actually put on an absolute black gold chain ring. This is the ovalized one, so it will hopefully get the best energy return to it. The Super Caliber is the XC race bike, like I said earlier. So instead of having a standard rear suspension or calling this a hard tail versus full suspension, they're calling this the soft tail. It has about 60 mils of travel in the rear and ISO speed from Trek translates to about 11 mils. This one is much closer to an actual suspension but doesn't look it. Instead, the whole rear stays here, flex a little bit and shoot it back and forth just a bit, just enough to take that bite away. But when pedaling, you should lose little to none of the pedaling efficiency. Upgraded dropper post on this one to the Kashima coated Fox transfer. It is probably the fastest dropper post on the market. The RockShox Axis model is extremely fast but for a manual model where it's just cably ran, this is a very fast unit. It has remote lockout on it with Trek's new drop lock system. So that's a remote lever which controls both of them. So you have a dropper post on it and the below switch is also remote lockout where you can turn off your front and rear suspension at the same time. Again, making it even more efficient, even faster at climbing. This is a race bike. It's number one goal is to go fast. They came standard with Kovi Pro carbon rims on it and it has been upgraded to the Triple X wheel set. That's gonna shave close to a pound off. The overall weight of this bike is around the 26, probably dripping into the 25 once it goes fully tubeless. So another thing he switched out, came with a pretty basic grips to them, standard lock on. He's upgraded to the Wolf Tooth Fat Paw. So they're just gonna be a little larger for him. It is on an extra large frame, so his hand size is gonna fit a little comfier, not too heavy. A lot of people like these, gloves or no gloves. The silicone kind of base grips, uh, like ESI, they actually have a, a nice feel to them. They dissipate the sweat a little bit differently, and they, they stay tacky, they still stay really grippy, even though they look quite smooth. They're a pain to put on, but once they're on, you get this soft, cushy feel, this tacky touch to it, and it's fantastic. Another change is the front fork, so that has been changed out to the Fox Factory 32. So this is an XC race bike. That is all you need for suspension. A small amount on the front, a small amount on the rear, makes it a little bit comfier, absorbs the hit, so it's gonna be a little smoother for you, but it's still gonna be a fast pedaling machine, and that's what counts first. Those climbs are the most important. Everything other than being comfy is the most important. So this obviously is a full carbon frame bike as well as having the triple X carbon wheels and a triple X carbon handlebar, all to bring that weight down. Carbon is guaranteed by Trek now for life, so that's pretty awesome. There's no real big concern there and they even have an after like second purchase programmer. So they'll actually give you a discount. That's how durable this carbon is. It is light, it is fast, it is stiff and responsive, and you can really feel the bike respond to it. So when you point a bike which is carbon somewhere, it does not flex in any which way, it just turns and does it, and it makes up a lot. When you go to higher end carbon wheels, you're shaving more and more weight off it, still getting that stiffness. Big benefit is the rotational weight. So they say you lose approximately three pounds for every one pound you lose. So if you can shave two pounds off by going from a high end aluminum, to an entry level carbon to a high end carbon wheel, you're shaving up three pounds worth of weight, if not more, to get that. So that's a huge amount of weight off the overall bike, especially when accelerating, and that's what you need with a bike like this. So a few more tweaks that you need doing. We need to adjust the remote 
lockout situation, it's kind of pulling the wrong way. So when the rear is locked, the front's unlocked and vice versa. So that needs changing. The pedals, I believe, are being switched out to something faster and lighter and racier than these, you know, downhill ones. Um, and the tires are gonna be switched out to two types of maxes for a faster rolling experience and again, shaving that weight away. So once you switch out the pedals, switch out the tires and go tubeless, this thing is gonna be a lightweight, close to 25, hopefully even a little bit less, we don't know yet, pound bike, which is impressive to say the least for a full suspension or soft tail. The way this shock works is honestly super weird. It is really cool and it works really well. The last touches he's done as well has switched out the hubs. So these are one gold to match with a scheme, Two, it is a clutch-based system, so there is no pause or anything flicking out to grab. It is always engaged or not engaged. That means when you pedal around, no matter where you stop, it always grabs. It is always there. Another thing is the silent. But all you can hear is the chain. There is no noise made by it. It's Definitely different. It's way more interesting than just getting louder, louder, like the Industry 9s or the Chris King. These are a silent hub. So when this is coming down the trail, all you're gonna hear is the guy breathing hard, the tires on the trail, and a fast bike's gonna come up, or you won't even hear it coming, and someone much faster than you with a much fancier bike is gonna take over. With Trex Project One package, you can adjust a lot of different things with it. The paint job itself is a super cool one. It is one of the higher end ones with the flakes of gold in there. And it looks like it's it's more natural than, than say a paint job. It looks like it's oiled in there. It is fantastic. You can adjust a lot of the parts in Project One, but to a certain degree, it's sometimes easier to buy a bike at a lower level like the 9.8. So you don't need to get that electronic or wireless shifting. You can go for a more affordable, but still super respectful shifting and then change out a few of the parts like the hubs, the wheels, the suspension, the dropper post and the handlebar and the grips and the chain ring. So pretty much he changed everything apart from the frame. With the amount of things he was changing on it, it made more sense to go with a 9.8 and build it up probably far superior than most 9.9s. Really the only downside is he has a standard cable instead of some sort of wireless or electronic system shifting it, which could easily be upgraded in a year or two if he wanted to. Yeah, it's a cool bike and I'm glad we had it in here. Um, the Super Caliber is definitely for someone who is looking to make some Strava times or entering the race scene is gonna be the fastest guy around and just wants to get fast. It's surprisingly a super lightweight full suspension. It's non-surprisingly, it's a lightweight full suspension bike for the cross country racer. That's what it's designed for. That's what it's been built up for in this situation. And we're hoping to see a lot of Strava times around our local area beaten by it. No pressure, James, I'm calling you out. You bought the bike, you better do it. Comment below if you think you should um, try out a Super Caliber or if you already have a Project One bike, I'd love to see a picture of it below. Like if you uh, enjoy this kind of bike and the cool paint job he chose. Otherwise guys, thank you again, good luck.